I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is Sam IT. We're going to put together some knowledge about business and IT. And today we're going to talk about a security concern, and that is spam and why you shouldn't read it. Okay, I know this sounds like an odd topic, and you're going to say to me, Scott, look, I know if I once I know it's spam, I'm not going to read spam. Of course, some spam is going to get into your mailbox. That's unavoidable. Everyone knows this. And of course, we try to eliminate spam by getting into our mailbox. We've got spam filters and all kinds of tools to check this. Our email providers uh, provide some tools. Our mailbox tools exist. We, we do a lot to stop spam, but of course, we're going to get some. And when we get it, we know we should delete it right away. Don't click on things. Don't respond to it. We've all been trained on this. But one thing we often don't train people on specifically, because a lot of people assume that everyone will just know, is that you should not be reading spam. Now, that doesn't make any sense. How do you know it's spam if you don't read it? You are correct. You must read a spam message long enough to determine that it is spam. Hopefully, you get very few of these. You have spam filters that catch a lot of obvious things. SPF records being wrong, missing pointer records, uh, coming from the wrong domain, full of obvious spam content. There's a lot of tools for knocking out spam, and hopefully AI will improve this. But of course, AI also ups the game. Not the problem. Once it's made it into your mailbox, that means that the whatever tools, AI or uh, heuristics or whatever it is that you have, have failed. It made it to you. And sometimes it's all but impossible. And of course, there's a possibility that it's not technically spam, meaning it's not bulk, but it is a unsolicited message that you don't want. In the real world, you don't want to be receiving unsolicited messages via email. Email is a highly secure mechanism, but it only works when you're expecting mail. If you're getting highly secure messages from random anonymous people, that's a very dangerous situation. You should never want that to happen on email. Always have a reason to expect that message. Now, of course, you're going to have sales mailboxes where you have to take things from unknown people, but there's a known purpose for the engagement. So that is an important structure that you have to have. Now, when it comes to receiving a mail, you are looking at it and you're trying to determine, is this from someone I know? Is it for a purpose I would expect? And you start looking through, you say, ah, something's wrong. This, this is, they're trying to get me to buy something. They're trying to get me to go somewhere. They're trying to get me to open a file. Something isn't right. The moment you know it's not from someone you know, the moment you know it's not legit, it needs to be deleted or marked as spam, of course, or reported to your IT department. It doesn't matter. One way or another, you need to take that action immediately. Two key reasons. One is don't waste your life reading a computer-generated bit of sales or a what's possibly an attack on your business. Don't spend your life reading those things. You have to accept that 99% of the time a human didn't even write that. And if a human did write that, as unlikely as that is, you still want nothing to do with it. It is just wasting your life. You've already determined that it's malicious, right? All unsolicited email that isn't for a purpose is malicious. It just is. We have to accept that. Humans don't want to accept that. We mentally want to think, well, there might be all these great reasons that a random person is going to come up and start a conversation with us. And of course, in real life, that could be because you're sharing a space. You've got some time to kill. Maybe they saw you. They think you seem like a nice person. But when you're doing it through email, this is a completely automated system. You are anonymous. They don't know who you are. They don't know you're a real person. They're testing your mailbox to see if you're a real person. They're hoping that you will get fooled into reading the message, even if you know it's spam for reason number two. Reason number two is humans are easily made to act irrationally and emotionally. So as you're reading one of these spam messages, they are designed in most cases, and the important thing is that they could be designed. It doesn't matter how often, but most of the time they are designed that if you start to read them, they will start to evoke an emotional response. Maybe someone has a tragedy that they need your help with. Maybe they have an opportunity that they're hoping you will decide to jump on. They will entice you with some a huge windfall of money you might get for doing this. Or maybe there's a starving child somewhere that you're going to save. Or perhaps there's an email domain that they want to sell to you that would be perfect for your business. And, uh, and, and this works whether you're the person who's actually going to action this, or maybe you're a receptionist who's receiving this mail and you say, oh, I should pass this on to my boss. No. Once you've identified it's spam, it should be gone absolutely without question. Right. This is uh, with prejudice. You want to be nuking that email because it is an attack on your mental state. The desire to waste your time is not normally why spam is being sent, but it could be. 
that could be a denial of service attack on your business. That is unlikely. That is a very, very unique case and very difficult to pull off. But someone could do that. They're attempting to waste your time to lower the efficiency of your business. That's a plausible thing. But in reality, that spam message is meant to either get you to take an action that is dangerous, clicking on a file, going to a certain website, displaying images that you shouldn't be displaying, because simple things like that, hovering over a link, opening uh, a link, looking at images, all those things may one, be malicious in and of themselves, and two, all of them feed back information to the person sending the mail. So you want to take very hard lines about spam. Don't be tempted to read it. Don't be tempted to pass it on to someone because by doing so, you're forcing someone else to waste time looking at it if you pass it on. And you're also taking a risk after you've identified that it's malicious, you are then tempting the next person to make the same mistake and spend time reading it and potentially become emotionally involved with it and then start losing good decision-making skills, becoming irrational, maybe clicking on something, opening a picture, maybe not having the same security you did. It's just another opportunity for something to go wrong. So when you have spam, this seems very counterintuitive. Scott, it's one, I would never just read the message. Once I know it's spam, I'm not wasting my time doing that, but people really do and often. And you're thinking, Scott, I'm not gonna like read it and become emotionally invested but you will because that's how humans work and the more we say it's not going to happen to me the more likely it is to happen to you trust me as a person who's very aware of this anytime i'm reading a spam message i'm instantly like but what if this one's real logically i know there's a zero chance of that absolutely zero yeah i emotionally am going to react to it that is how humans are accepting that we're humans is the first step in being secure don't read spam identify it as spam delete it with prejudice, report it, block domains, do whatever you can do to reduce your spam load. But very importantly, never allow an emotional attachment to a garbage, malicious uh, message ever happen. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support this channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. If you're interested in deep dive IT learning, I have a book on Amazon. Link down in the description is Linux Administration Best Practices by Pact Publishing. You can just find it on Amazon, nice and easy. And of course, share this with uh, people who need training in spam management. This is not just for IT, it's not just for business. This is for everybody who works with email handling in your organization. Feel free to share it, leave your comments below, ask your questions. More training will be coming on this channel. As always, I will see you next time.